All please. Farmer? Here. Henning? Here. Gorman? Here. Merkel? Here. Kelly? Here. Bachman? Here. And Stevens? Here. All right. Welcome everyone came in today. Brave the cold. Um, I'm going to give it to Amanda to tee it up. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, if you'll recall, back in June of 2023, the City Council authorized staff to engage Kleininger's group to do a thoroughfare plan for the City of Clayton. As part of that, um, one of the things in the contract was they would come and give an update to City Council, and that's what we're going to do this evening. So I will turn it over to Mr. Sam Morton.
How many days did you do that? Do you, is that an average, or is that just we picked a random day? Do you want questions now or at the end? Um. So going back to the last slide, um, when you look at the f estimated future traffic for 2050, so you said that it went up around 10%. Well, when you look at um, 70 and Southway, that went up from 2,700 to 4,100-ish in purple. But then Hoke Road for... Um, the increase, it's 7,200. So that one stayed the same at Hoke and Wenger, 7,200. And we have um, basically like that's where a Walmart is. And that's where um, a proposed like roundabout has been discussed. So there's no increase there, which I find interesting. And then down the road a little bit went from 6,700 to 7,000, which isn't 10%. And to the left of that is North Clayton and um, 
lots of potential for development there. So that did not go up 10%. So I wondered um, what the deviation was for that area. So for that intersection at Wanger and Hoke, because even down Wanger is 6,300 to 2050 projection is the same exact number of 6,300. Um, Amanda, Randy, I don't know the interjection of, you know, I know that we've said if ODOT says that's where a roundabout should go, is, is ODOT going to say a roundabout should go there because there's going to be an increase in the future or you can keep it a four-way stop because your 2050 projection is the exact same as 2022? So I think when you look particularly at that intersection, as it's zoned right now, it's not zoned for for business. In our plan, it does have business and mixed use. And I think that that may be what they're looking at is if it just stays residential, you're going to have the few houses that are there and not the proposed future development at 2050 when that comes down the pike. So I think that may be where the disconnect is. Okay. Yeah, didn't you say this is based on information that you currently have on how spaces are going to be used? Yes. So mixed use. development changes could happen next year, which could throw everything out as far as what the projected numbers could be, totally different. Yeah. yeah, for instance, there's houses on Winger Road, there's be like what 30 houses going in so that they haven't been built yet but five years from now the numbers that you project forward could be totally different as they projected for you know 2050 just based on that changes in the next five years The forecast go every five years? Is that what you're saying? Um, I mean, as far as...
Quick any, question. Any questions? Oh, go, go. Um, the roads you were looking at, those are the roads that Clayton is responsible for because I know here in the region, the um, story I've been told by Randy is that we're responsible for 200 miles of road, Inglewood's around 20. So I was expecting what I saw for what was highlighted was that's what we're responsible for. Is that, is that accurate? I have a question that uh, actually this might be more for Randy. So we have this information for our city, and as the, as Travis said, you know we share with other a lot of other entities around here. So how do we how do we work one plan? Do we do that? Is it? I mean, how do we communicate with the other cities? Well, and one of the other ways the interconnectivity between all of those, all, all, as in our surrounding cities, is MVRPC. I mean, they're a very big player in making sure that those projects kind of all interconnect. And you get better grant funding if whatever we're planning flows into what they're planning. Any other questions or comments? The only other thing I would have to say is for Amanda, um, the proposed future speed limits, there's nothing on here about a year. So what is the thinking with that? So um, with that, so we did have choice one. Remember, if you recall, a few months ago, actually it was maybe early last year, we had a work session to talk about speed limits within the city, and we asked Choice One to go through and look at and do speed studies on those roads to see which ones we could actually reduce. Um, if council does decide to do that, I'll get that information out to you, um, does decide to reduce those speed limits, then we would need to bring an ordinance to council, and then ODOT would have to approve that, and then we could lower the speed limits. Now on our own roads, like with Westbrook Road, I don't think ODOT really cares what we do with that. If we wanna just lower that, we can do that. Um, but as far as timing, um, we've had so much on the agenda that it's not something that has been pressing for me. Um, but that is something now that we're talking about this, now that we're actually getting the thoroughfare plan um, up and going, 
that we can bring forward to council and you can make a decision on what you want to do. And that way they can have the information before the completion of the plan. I thought this was for 1950, Amanda. The speed limits aren't for 1952 or 2050, excuse me. Well, <laughs> <laughs> they may have been that speed in 1950, I'm not sure. Um, but it, no, those could be all the way through 2050 if whatever council is here in 2050 decides to maintain them at that speed or if the population hasn't changed so much that it necessita necessitates a change. I thought we weren't going to change them until 2050 is what I meant. N no, no, no. <laughs> For some of the like, uh, you know, some of the ones that we're proposing to ODOT, mm -hmm. is there about you know an approximate timeline that usually takes? Uh, like, for example, okay, if we get more, uh, yeah, I didn't, you know, it's yeah. it's higher levels of government. It could take a day. It could take twenty years. Um, I mean, I'm just using that as an example. Like something like if, if more development comes, mm -hmm. you know, in the northern part here, obviously this stuff doesn't you know pop up like that. But uh, you know if it was suddenly like, oh, we need to reduce, you know, we mm -hmm. need to see if we can reduce 40. You know. Well, so that's an interesting one. So for that particular section of 40 that runs through Clayton that abuts the high school, we had talked specifically about that one because what are they going, 45 or so? And then they hit the 20 mile an hour at the school zone. And uh, we had called that out choice one in particular because one is dangerous when you get to Crestway and you're going that fast and then it drops. And the issue with that one, um, it was kind of a stretch for them to tell us that yeah, we could drop it to whatever it is. I'm sorry, I can't see on here. Whatever it is that we were going to drop it to because there just wasn't the traffic counts there. They're just not there. There aren't enough people, even during the school year, traveling that road to drop it any farther. Anything else? Hearing nothing, I'll, I'll say thank you for presentation. Very informative, and yeah, yep, yep. Thank you. We look forward to working with you on this. All right. Thank you. A motion to close the workshop. So moved. Second. Motion to close the workshop by Mr. Gorman. Second by Mr. Bachman. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, the workshop is closed.